The BBC has obtained rare footage from inside China's secretive system of mass incarceration in the far western region of Xinjiang. In a self-shot video, a former fashion model who is from the Uyghur ethnic group can be seen handcuffed to a bed. His relatives say he was taken away for what China has called re-education and that nothing has been heard from him since. The Uyghurs are Muslim from the Central Asian region. The majority of them live in China's autonomous Xinjiang region. Current estimates suggest there are around 10 million Uyghurs living there. But up to 1 million Uyghurs have been detained in secure educational training centers and there's growing evidence of human rights violations inside these camps, including forced labor and torture. Neither the Chinese Foreign Ministry nor Xinjiang authorities have responded to the BBC's requests for comment. John Sudworth has this report. A few years ago, Murdan Gappa was a long way from his home in Xinjiang making good money as a fashion model in southern China. But this is him in February. His camera reveals his filthy clothes and his left arm handcuffed to a bed. He's now clearly back in Xinjiang. Beyond the steel mesh on the window, a propaganda announcement drones away in the Uyghur language. Despite the risks that it may bring him further punishment, <inaudible> relatives, including his uncle who lives in Amsterdam, say they've no choice but to release the video he sent them. Staying silent won't help him either. The only thing I can do is to raise public awareness. It's our only chance to rescue him. The young model had already served 16 months in jail, having been convicted of a drugs offence in 2018, although his family say he was innocent. Upon completing his sentence, whatever relief he may have felt was short-lived. Soon afterwards, the police picked him up again and took him back to Xinjiang for, they said, a few days' education. We've asked Chinese government officials here whether he was suspected of any further offence, and even if he was, why he was handcuffed to a bed. We've received no response. China has built a vast network of highly secure facilities across Xinjiang, some of which we were shown as part of its efforts to convince the world that they're schools for combating extremism, not camps. But last year, under intense international criticism, it said they were being closed. The texts Murdan Gappa sent along with his video clearly suggest otherwise. 50 to 60 people were locked in a small room, he writes. All had sacks on their heads and handcuffs and shackles. Elsewhere, he could hear the sounds of torture. One time, I heard a man screaming from morning to evening, he writes. His first-hand description of the police holding cell uh, is very, very vivid. He writes in very, very good Chinese. Uh, and uh, it gives us a lot of detail, um, and frankly, a lot of horrific detail about the way in which these people are treated. So it is quite a rare, a rare source. In the end, it was the virus that allowed him to get word out from this secretive system. With a slightly high temperature, he was moved to this isolation cell as a precaution and given access to personal belongings which, unknown to his guards, contained his phone. But as suddenly as they began, the messages stopped. He's not been heard from since. Sophie, this is just one man's account, and it's difficult to fully verify, of course, although, as you heard, their experts suggest much of it rings true. And no wonder. China has built a huge capacity for detaining people in Xinjiang in recent years. The trouble is that information about it is now almost impossible to gather, which is why these text messages are so important, with that chilling detail about these 50 or 60 people hooded and shackled, huddled in that police cell and eventually bussed off somewhere else, suggesting that the system of control, coercion and incarceration of Uyghurs continues, albeit perhaps even more hidden than before. John Sudworth in Beijing, thank you.